Hey guys, this is just going to be a showcase of most of my video cameras. There's still one. I think the very first camera, video camera that I ever had um, is downstairs somewhere. I can't be bothered to look for it. But the very first camera I had was like a Hi8 camera, um, just like uh, just like this. Um, this JVC. This I think this is VHS, but it's it's a Hi8 camera, very very similar to this, just a handy cam. And I, this still works. And I use this for short films and tricks like that. I hook it up to a CRT TV via the RCA cables. I'm here, and I can get some really interesting effects. But yeah, this this camera still works. Uh, still going strong. Um, and I've been shooting short films and stuff like that since I was 16, and I started doing professional work. Um, I don't know, I, I, it was really just a hobby, but I love shooting stuff, and then obviously I've shot a couple of weddings. I hated shooting weddings, absolutely hated it, um, and I shot several of them in my early 20s. And then I, in my early 30s, I started doing corporate work, um, which I'll get to with the EX, the Sony EX-1 camera. Um, and now I'm getting heaps of inquiries um, doing video work because I've been doing a lot of promos for the boxing gym. Uh, I'm an assistant coach and I also do a lot of the social media work. And I guess it's going pretty good because I'm getting a lot of inquiries. But with all the lockdowns and the worldwide, you know what, um, almost all of it was cancelled last year. But I'll, I'll get into that in a second. So basically when I, I, I was, uh, I've been a commercial editor for about two years and then a promo editor before that. And so a lot of my job, at, at, I worked in television for 15 years, but as a promo editor and as a commercial editor, I was mainly doing editing, animation, um, you know, uh, uh, graphic design. I was doing a lot of stuff like that. So I didn't shoot much. I was just doing it as a side hustle. Um, but definitely um, I took a redundancy uh, from that job during uh, 2020 and then all the lockdowns happened and everything like that I couldn't get any work anywhere and my old job really loved me they said oh look um can we you want do you want to come back as a camera person I hadn't shot anything since 2017 2016 maybe and that um I'll get to what I was shooting um so I was like oh yeah yeah I'd love to come back but there was a freeze on and and all the rest of it so I bought a black magic pocket cinema camera from ebay this was about 800 dollars, and i got two of them here i'll explain that in a second and this i thought because um when i was a as a commercial editor i was uh, color correcting a lot i wouldn't call myself a color grader a lot of people who say if you're i've done four courses now on color grading uh through davinci resolve via ripple training and stuff like that um and to be a color grader, that's a really specialist job, you know, um, color grading. I was doing a lot of color correcting, getting a lot of S-log footage, and then all I'm doing is color correcting it back to standard. And I didn't understand. It's just like, why aren't you guys just shooting this on standard, <laughs> you know? Um, so to get my head around even more of the color correction and stuff like that, I found myself the cheapest option was this original Blackmagic camera. It was all manual as well. So you're really dialing in your white balance, you know, relearning white balance rather than having to rely on a white card or gray card. You're learning, you know, 5600 for outside, 3200 for tungsten, stuff like that. Um, it's all manual focus. Um, you're learning, you're really learning to use your peaking. Um, and it's a fantastic, in fact, this is my favorite sensor out of all the cameras here. Um, just a beautiful image quality. It shoots it all in ProRes, uh, like a flat profile. So, you you know, you can bring it up via, I just use Film Convert. Um, yeah, so I bought this camera to just become better at, as a camera person. And I think it definitely helped me greatly um, having this camera. But I ended up not taking that job. I got another really good job offer with the government. And I took that instead as much of the disappointment of my old boss. He he really loved me. <laughs> um, yeah, so I got two of these. This one is broken. And I'll do a review later on in more detail of each of these cameras. Um, but for now, this is just an overview. So the reason I got two, this one here it still works, still works fine. The HDMI mini is broken, so it's rattling around somewhere in here. It's so annoying. Um, the battery doesn't work at all. Like even if you fully charge a Blackmagic uh, pocket battery, it, it just doesn't work. So you have to rig it out like this and put in an external battery and hook it up via the DCI input there. Um, as, uh, uh, and I came across this. This cost just over a thousand dollars, but it came with all these bells and whistles. I, I think it came with the cage as well, but I ended up purchasing another one. 
Um, but yeah, for a thousand dollars, and the guy barely used it. Still came in the box. It was almost in mint condition. The battery port still works, kind of. Although I don't use it, I just attach a battery DCI, um, one of those NPF batteries of Sony batteries up top. And um, yeah, um, I still shoot with this, but this is purely just a hobby camera. I wouldn't take this to a professional shoot. There's a lot of downsides with this Blackmagic Pocket original camera. Um, like I love the design of it and everything like like how pocket-esque it is, but <laughs> there's so many limitations to this camera, I wouldn't take it to a professional shoot. This is purely just a hobby camera and to make me better as a camera person, um, but the image quality out of this camera is, is phenomenal. It's, it's a really beautiful camera. So buying a cheap $800 camera ended up costing me just over two grand <laughs> because I ended up buying another camera just over a thousand which was more in mint condition and had a lot more stuff and um, I had to buy a battery attachment and stuff like that I think I think all up these two plus all the attachment and en ended up costing me just over two grand so pretty expensive all up when I was originally purchasing purchasing it just for $800 to learn how to be a camera person um, I should have spoken about this one before, but this is really the camera I've had for a long time. It's just a, a Sony HD camera. I bought this in 2011, 2012. I shot many short films with this camera. I've shot um, many vlogs with it as well. I was vlogging when I, I had a YouTube channel, Pod Me If You Can. You can go find it. I was doing a lot of movie reviews on there. Um, and... Um, I still use this camera to this day because it has a projector on it. So it's really interesting. You can shoot something and then use the projector, play it back, and then project it onto a subject. So you can get some really cool effects if you're doing a short film or an interesting promo or commercial. Um, but so I still keep this camera around. Uh, yeah, fantastic small. And I love the form factors of handy cams. It just feels more natural than a DSLR or mirrorless camera, which I'll get to in a sec. The next camera I want to talk about is this JVC camera. This was given to me, you know, ages ago. I think we had a couple of these over time. And I still have the Hi8 camera somewhere around. Um, I still use this again. I have a CRT TV and I hook up, um, sh hook up this camera via the RCA and I shoot with this camera and then I shoot the CRT TV to get some really, really interesting effects. So this bad boy, is, I still keep around. Just so cool. <laughs> this is what we used for a long time, kids. Fixed lens cameras, huh? Um, the next one is uh, the uh, Canon 5D Mark II. So I sold a lot of my Magic the Gathering cards. I think I sold, I sold a Jews MG and I was able to afford this whole lot just by selling that card because Magic the Gathering cards are worth a fortune. It's worth even more now than when I sold it. So the body alone was about 800 bucks, And this lens is a 24 to 70. Very legendary um, Canon L lens, it's uh, it's got the red um, ring in there. Uh, it's hard to see. Uh, sorry, <laughs> but I love taking photos. I have shot a short film with this, but I, I just like it for photography. Jeez, it's heavy. Um, yeah, uh, it's a legendary camera. If you haven't heard of the Canon 5D Mark II, uh, this had video options on it, and it was full frame. And Philip Bloom was really the guy responsible for that DSLR revolution through his tutorials on YouTube. He showed you how to set up the camera and he shot many, many shorts with it and they looked incredible. Like the color science of Canon, the build quality of Canon, the full frame sensor of this is just so legendary. Um, it's such a such a great camera. I've taken it to the Philippines. I've shot many photos in the Philippines. I love shooting portraiture. It's my favorite thing to shoot and I really, really want to get back to it. Um, but I just don't have money to buy a strobe. Light, I really want to get a strobe light and start shooting um, stills again. But at the moment, for me personally, a lot of the demand is video, video, video. So, But yeah, I love the Canon 5D Mark II. I haven't taken it out in quite some time. Um, I think it was early last year since I've taken it out. No joke. The other camera I want to talk about here is the GoPro. And this is probably the most used camera out of all the cameras I have. Oh, probably my iPhone, which I'm shooting this on now. But all my boxing video footage, I shoot on this. I have bought a GoPro for it. Um, oh, sorry, a uh, 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 gimbal for this. And I was planning to do a lot more, but I've been so busy um, w with, with my job as a boxing coach um, assistant and I do all the social media work for this. But basically, I set this up in the corner of the gym. It shoots 4K60, so when you play it back, uh, none of the social media websites play back at 60 frames per second. But 
because I'm shooting at 60 frames per second when it plays back at 25 or 30 or whatever Instagram plays it back as all the punches look a lot faster as well um you know and because i shoot it in 4k i can zoom in and set it up in vertical mode which is really good for social media i talk about that a lot in my boxing vlog but i use this every day for the boxing gym my my hard drive is just packed full of video (laughs) boxing footage um but yeah it's definitely helped me get clients it's definitely helped me in advertising and that's a weapon oh that's something that we can really advertise with our gym that we shoot um your sessions and then we upload them to a private youtube uh, channel and then we send them a link so they can see how they're progressing it's really really interesting um if just by adding the video aspect to it like you can do it all on your phone but by having a dedicated camera especially a gopro where you can kick this sort of around like not that i do but it's really durable whereas a phone I, i just feel bad Although phones are so well built now, I just feel bad like taking up memory on your phone with videos or putting it somewhere where it's very easy to fall down, you know, and all the rest of it. I, I, I'd much prefer just having a dedicated video camera for the social media or for the shooting the, the boxing lessons. But yeah, the GoPro Hero 9, I use this every day. This was about $800. Um, this and I bought other stuff for an extra battery and, and all the rest of it. So yeah a lot of this stuff is pretty expensive even used oh sorry this one wasn't used this is new uh, i'll get to the gh5 in a second the next camera i want to talk about is the sony ex1 oh my gosh look at this beautiful camera it's so massive compared to the black magic <laughs> look at that and the um i got the gh5 yeah i'll talk about the gh5 in a second look at that Jeez, just massive the sony ex1 so this camera was so legendary back in the day um uh, i always when i was in uni i always wanted a sony pd150 that was like several thousand dollars maybe five six thousand dollars and um by 2009 when this camera was released this was like excalibur this was like a broadcast shoulder mounted camera but miniaturized and this was like considered a very small camera (laughs) <laughs> back in the day it's the dinosaur now but this weighs a lot it's very very heavy camera compared to you know it was, it was a very light camera back in the day but compared to the cameras now it's very very heavy but i love fixed lens cameras you got to remember this whole camera is engineered for this lens so they work together so well all the professional buttons are right there Um, for broadcast work, a dedicated ring just for focus, a dedicated ring just for zoom, a dedicated ring just for aperture, and built-in ND filters, hit zebra, peaking, and this is, et cetera, and this is the Cine Alta line from from Sony, so this is their highest level division where they make their high-level cameras and stuff like that, so when you see the Cine Alta mark, that's a very high-end Sony camera. This is a Fujinon lens as well, fantastic lens, it's got its own um lens cap and hood which i thought was pretty cool (laughs) built-in nds i can't emphasize how good that is and the image quality is still good i just shot a boxing promo with this camera and it still looked fantastic um there's lots and lots and lots of downsides with it I'll, i'll save it for a proper review um like it needs a lot of lights i don't like this stupid ring and all the fujinon cameras pro cameras have this see see here so it's on full manual focus so i can feel where i get to infinity and then if you accidentally if you push it forward it gets to this weird hybrid autofocus manual focus mode so you're like oh where's where is it (laughs) it's so stupid um it's so easy to do that to push the ring forward during the heat of the moment when you're filming like live stuff it's oh i can't stand it and these buttons are here as well like it's not too dangerous for your recording but it turns off display and stuff like that so i like to shoot from here from the the top handle using the zoom rocker here and then the focus i like to hold it like that and then quite often when your hand grabs it you know you you your knuckles sort of um run over the buttons turning stuff on you're like where's my display where's my battery what what, what's going on (laughs) you know it's so annoying um it needs a lot of light this camera the autofocus is just garbage which is okay I'm, I'm, I'm very used to manual focus um it took me a long time to realize this but don't shoot over f4 because you get a lot of soft images i i did not know that i usually just from my stills camera days i always shot 5.6 to get the sharpest or even f8 there's like an old saying in photography f8 and be there but just with fixed lens cameras and the smaller sensor you don't want to go over f4 um 
on on your um, f stop there. You want to keep it two point eight is always good. I, I a bit scary going shallower, but um, I like to keep it at two point eight just to keep it all sharp and especially when you're in professional shoots, you got to nail that focus, man. <laughs> um, and the the EVF is just garbage. Um, on this thing, I, I just use the LCD screen, which isn't great as well, but a phenomenal camera, great usability. It's just such a dinosaur. I don't like bringing this camera out. It brings so much attention to yourself. It, there's so much professionalism with this camera. Like when you take this camera out, people pay attention. People think, oh, wow, what are they shooting? Oh, what is this? Not knowing it's like a 20-year-old camera. <laughs> it's like a dinosaur. Um uh, uses these old S by S cards, which were so expensive back in the day. I actually got two of them. I don't know where the second one is. Uh, professional XLR inputs, if you want it. Um, although the scratch audio is pretty decent, I, I I usually record all my stuff with using you know digital audio recorders like my H5, which I'm recording this on now. Um, just quickly, what else? Uh, the battery lasts all day with the NPF. I, I love this camera, but. Um, yeah, it's just discouraging taking this out. Um, I probably still would do a professional shoot with this. You have no slow motion as well. Like you do, but it's under. It's at 720p and I would never hand in footage under 1080p. All my footage I hand in is always 1080p. Um, it's usually for social media anyway. Uh, I, I would, yeah, you, you just don't shoot slow motion with this just because it, it drops all the way down to 720. But I love this camera. This cost about two and a half thousand dollars used on eBay. When it first came out, it was like 12 grand. And this is still holding its price. I've still seen it sold on eBay for like just over 2K, you know, so um, people still love it. It's a cult camera. It's all beat up. Like when I bought this, it was all beat up as well, all the scratches and things like that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I really like this camera. I learned a lot from it. It's let me down quite a few times because of the low light. Um, it's not, sorry, it doesn't, it's not great at low light. It needs light. And I've had issues with that diffraction, the stopping it down to 5.6 and then some of the images coming out pretty soft. Um, yeah, but that's the EX1, the legendary Sony EX1. The next camera I want to talk about is the incredible Sony Z90, another fixed lens camera. This is so, look how small that is compared to, compared to the, um, the, uh, EX1. It's just so tiny for phenomenal EVF here. Um, ND filter, amazing autofocus. This is the only camera out of all the cameras I have with really, really good autofocus. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. Uh, built in ND filters, beautiful focus ring here. Although, I, uh, you know, it's shared between zoom and focus. I just keep it on focus and zoom with this rocker here and that zoom wide and telephonic rocker here. Really great XLR inputs here, which I got a really good, this was a recommended mic that, um, for this camera, um what else yeah and um it's the very disappointing thing about this camera it, it does shoot 4k but only at 25 or 30 frames per second you have to go down to um 1080 to get all the bells and whistles like 50 frames per second 120 240 frames per second variable frame rates so very disappointing there's no 4k 50 or 4k 60 um options on this is that's the biggest letdown of this camera but i love this camera it's so professional excuse me, it's so professional looking, um, the image quality, I've shot um, a docu one documentary on this, a couple of promo videos for the boxing gym, but this isn't my camera, this is works camera, um, so I, I, I wouldn't take this to a professional shoot because it's not my camera, although work is very encouraging, they said, no, 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 um, we bought that camera, we want you to get good at it, just practice as much as you want, but I'd, I'd still feel bad going to a professional shoot with, with works camera, so it's, it's not mine, but I do practice with as much as possible, I do really love this camera, this was nearly $5,000, this was just over four grand for the camera, but I bought uh, two really good, uh, really big, um, SD cards. I bought another battery because the battery isn't great. It's like a handy cam battery. It's ridiculous. Um, and then this uh, uh, microphone was highly recommended. And this one was really expensive. Uh, this microphone, so nearly five k for this. But you got to remember, although it's a fixed lens camera, and it, <laughs> the lowest it goes down to the f four. Like it says, it's a two point eight lens. It isn't. Once you start zooming in, it'll start cranking. Um, the aperture down um, so minimum is f4 so just set it up, set it at f4 where you, where you can zoom in and out at any range and not having to worry about it stepping down um, I, I'll go into more details of this when I do a review focus on the z90 but it's a 
fantastic all-round camera again built in nds high, uh, really high level sound so I, again i record everything externally the sound but just in case sonic screws up you can always go back to very high quality um scratch audio great focal range you know awesome awesome autofocus now a lot of people insult especially the older camera people camera guys they always go you should be shooting everything manual focus geez i've been shooting manual focus almost all my life it's i I can't like it's fine like i'm used to it but quite often in video production nowadays you're not only shooting it you're not only lighting it you're not only doing all the sound but you have to ask the questions and produce the video or write it and stuff like that i've always longed for the day and it's definitely the case with me i've always had to ask the questions and and all the rest of it and sometimes even write it write the answers um for them when i was doing the training videos so um, the reason I bought the EX1, I, I did several training videos and promo videos from my brother's work. He worked at a car dealership as a mechanic, and so I bought this. That's why I bought the Sony EX1 to you know look professional. So I made my money back definitely on the Sony EX1. But so I, I was shooting everything manual, and I always longed for the for the day where I could have something an autofocus. Like if I can have a piece of technology that just takes away one aspect of production, that's massive for me. So if I have a camera after setting up the light, setting up the sound, setting up um, where I want the interview, if I can just focus on asking the questions without having to constantly check if they're in focus, that's massive for me. That's why autofocus is such a big thing. It's so important. And um, a lot of the modern Sony cameras and uh, Canon cameras have fantastic autofocus and definitely the Z90 is definitely one of those. So that's massive for me if a camera has good autofocus. And so this brings me to the GH5, which is um, the camera I recently purchased last year. I, because of all the inquiries I had, uh, it was weddings, engagements, promo videos for work, uh, for their, for small businesses. Um, I, I would have easily brought the Z90 for all of those, but because, again, it's not my camera, I would feel bad bringing work camera to, to, to a paid gig. I bought myself the GH5, which was 1400 but I bought two memory cards, uh, two more batteries, uh, the lens I already had because from my Blackmagic days, uh, sh- uh, sorry, shooting with the Blackmagic, this is micro four-thirds as well. I decided to go with the GH5 because it's micro four-thirds. I already have the lens. Um, it's fantastic. The stabilization is awesome on it. Um, uh, the, I, I think the image quality is pretty good. It's, it's all on natural. I, I shoot everything on natural. Um, and yeah, I have, I have a gimbal as well. So combining this with the gimbal is just phenomenal. The, and the EVF is amazing. The, the biggest issue with this camera is the autofocus. Oh my gosh. The autofocus sucks on this. Um, and the, uh, it's not great in low light, but that's fine. I'm used to bringing around uh, lights. Um, I'm not entirely happy with the sensor. Like out of all the cameras I have, again, my favorite sensor is the Black Magic um, Pocket Cinema camera. I think this the image sensor in this is phenomenal. I, I'm not I, I'm not the biggest fan of the GH5, although it does look fantastic. Um, I, I looked at the GH6, which was only released a couple of days ago, and that looks incredible. Like my favorite of all the Panasonic um, Lumix cameras is the S1H. I think the S1H has the best looking, like it's almost like an Ari Alexa and the GH6 just from the footage I've seen is like 95% there to an S1H. So I would love to upgrade <laughs> um, to the GH6, although the GH6 doesn't have great autofocus. But definitely if you have a GH5 and you have a lens like this, the 12 to 35 Lumix, which is a native lens. So the stabilization on this lens, the stabilization with GH5 is fantastic. If you have this set up, and it doesn't cost that much because this this camera I got for fourteen hundred, which is insane for what you get out of it. If you can't make money with this setup, then you're not a good videographer, <laughs> you know. Um, especially with the gimbal and all the rest of it. So, yeah, that's on me if I can't make any money out of this. So, out of all the cameras here for a professional gig, I, I'll, I'll take the Z ninety built in NDs. Great autofocus, high level audio quality recording, great 4K for the interview. And if I want to do overlays or cinematic B roll, I got, I can drop it down to 1080 and shoot, you know, 240 frames a second, um, 50 frames a second, etc. I've got all that. The Z90, I love the form factor. It's lightweight, fantastic camera for a hobby. I would definitely be for a hobby project like a short film, the Black Magic Pocket Cinema camera because I love 
the sensor on this. It's just such a beautiful image um, coming out of this. And it's really encouraging me, both the GH5 and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, because of the Micro Four Thirds, you, it, there's just a lot of lens opportunities you can get with this camera. You have to get adapters and th stuff like that because the crop factor is annoying. But it's really encouraging me to fall in love with optics. Um, because I, as much as I love fixed lens cameras, you're locked into that lens and that look, whereas um, Micro Four Thirds and um, the GH5 and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, by, by being able to change the lenses around, you really get to see the effect and power of the optics and really appreciate how the camera works and really appreciate what lens does to the image. So if you're an image lover and all the rest of it, yeah, you can't go wrong with interchangeable lenses and a good sensor like like these two cameras. And this is the GH5 is an extremely respected camera, one of the best all round cameras you can get, except for the terrible autofocus. Which, you know, um, if you're wanting to learn camera, you, you, how the camera works and everything like that, you can't go wrong with this because really nailing down manual focus. But for me personally, um, as a person who does everything, if I can have a camera that just takes that focus issue away where I can set up autofocus and not have to worry about it, yeah, that's my thing. So yeah, that's all my cameras. Hopefully I'll be shooting a lot more videos this year. I try to shoot as much videos as I possibly can just to get better and better. Um, so it's a great opportunity at the boxing gym. I get to shoot anytime I want to. Um, excess, putting into practice all these cameras and different lenses and stuff like that and trying out different things. Um, but yeah, I'm keeping an eye on the case numbers. It, it's still very high here in Canberra. Like every day we're getting high case numbers. I don't think we're ever going to go to a lockdown again, but it's just hesitant just because of how many cancellations I had last year for video gigs. I'm just very hesitant in pushing my video production company. Um, advertising or hey if you guys need any video work uh, I'm, I'm ready to go so at this moment i'm just taking the opportunity to buy up some lenses that i can afford uh, cheap vintage lenses and just practicing with those and really appreciating um how the dip different optics work how the different cameras work how, what 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 lots or what um color grading techniques and strategies that I like to employ to make me different to other video production guys. Like, um, you know, I've, I've definitely got a cool CRT system set up with, or, or a projector set up with this, or a CRT with the JVC camera setting up a CRT TV and shooting. I can come up with some really interesting images. Um, yeah, and I, I think this, whatever free time I get, just, just focus on that will make me better. Anyway, guys, I'll do a review that focuses on each of these cameras in more detail, like one at a time. But at the moment, these are all my cameras. Let's see if I can get them all on shot here. Yeah, there we go. Oh, there, there we go. Get in there, 5D Mark II. Get in there, EX1. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that beautiful family of cameras, camera lenses. Oh, yeah. <laughs>